Welcome back to Banfield. Just when we thought the U.S. economy was on its way back, it appears that the wheels may have fallen off again. Another huge supply chain nightmare is just around the corner, which means higher prices, longer wait times for basic things, the things that we buy every day. The surprising reason? COVID. Something else we thought was in the rearview mirror. But in China, it is not in the rearview mirror, and a lot of things we like and want are made in China and shipped to us. And right now, China just happens to be in the middle of its worst COVID outbreak since the coronavirus began in Wuhan back in January of 2020. Yes, let that sink in. It's bad over there. The entire city of Shanghai, and that's 26 million people, they are currently in a lockdown and outbreaks continue to rage in other parts of the country too. China has a much stricter COVID policy than we do here in the U.S. They are much, much quicker to shut things down when cases start to pop up. And uh, when they do, it hits us hard, especially since the war in Ukraine has already piled on to those shipping, uh, global, you know, those global shipping route issues that we've been experiencing. And it's now expected that the new outbreak in China is a tipping point. So the flow of all the gadgets and furniture and the building supplies that we expected would open back up and flood back into the U.S., think again. But there must be a way around this new looming problem, especially since we now have 2020 hindsight. Pardon the pun. For that, I'm joined by Julia Neshwat. Uh, Julia is the former deputy assistant to the president for Homeland Security and Resilience. She worked in four previous administrations, and she's also a distinguished fellow at the Atlantic Council Global Energy Center. Julia, thank you so much for being here. You would think we'd have figured this out, that we'd have figured out a workaround since we've been living this for two years. Have we not? Uh, you're exactly right, Ashley. Um, a, a lot of lessons learned here. You know, you've got the COVID crisis, you know, it ebbs and flows. You have the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Um, it's it, now more than ever, it's just so important to stay informed and, um, you know, as you were saying, a lot of this is made in China. And, you know, I, I would say one of the silver linings, though, from COVID is it, it truly has exposed the fragility of our supply chains in the United States. Even things as simple as masks and gloves can very quickly become a national security issue. Yeah, I remember when it was toilet paper and hand sanitizer and people were fighting each other at Walmart for it. Okay, so for the people who are watching right now, let's do everybody a big service and best we can predict what it is we need to be aware of. Like, what should we be buying now if we are about to hit another big supply chain problem and another big, you know, episode of empty store shelves? How can we get ahead of the game? What are the tips? Well, in addition to staying informed, I would say that, you know, take that extra time to, to read the labels now. Um, if it says, you know, made in China, put it down, made in the U.S., we've got to be able to really help promote within our communities and at the state level, at the federal level, um, to be able to really encourage more manufacturing and development here in the United States. Um, we no longer, believe it or not, produce things like penicillin and antibiotics. Believe it or not, 80% of our oncology meds are um, no longer available here. Computer chips, batteries, all controlled by China. So uh, again, I would say that we really need to be more vigilant about where things are made from. So Julia, is this gonna become like a tipping point for us in how we um, do business in the United States? You know, for decades, we were shipping our jobs out to anywhere else that was cheaper. Are we now gonna start realizing how much that's come back to bite us and perhaps start considering maybe not expensive labor here in the US, but perhaps somewhere closer to home, like a truck's drive away, maybe Mexico? Absolutely, in fact, uh, there are other countries where we could turn to that are more aligned, you know, that, that don't even have human rights violations, places like um, Japan or India or, or even Central America, where, where we could have a, a better supply chain um, pathway, if you will. Um, but you mentioned uh, truckers. I wanted to say um, it's, it's another area where I think we could do better. I, in fact, some states are considering, you know, to, to increase the staffing by lowering the age requirement to be a trucker. You, uh, mm. you can lower it from, from 21 to age 18, which could be of help. But the, of course, the other challenge, though, is gas prices today. So that's going to still course. be a conundrum. 
which is why I brought up the, the uh, war in Ukraine. I only have a couple seconds left, but I have to ask you this because I am always very prepared for Christmas. I do my Christmas shopping usually in October. I started anyway, but now I'm seeing headlines in all the newspapers that say you might want to get even more of a jump. And I know people who were ordering presents in September of last year didn't get them till January. Does that mean I'm looking at my watch? We're nine months away till Christmas. Do I have to start doing this now? Do I have to actually start ordering presents now? Unfortunately, I would, I mean, to be vigilant, I would say absolutely start thinking about it. But again, I would again emphasize, think about where it's, where it's been made and that could help expedite uh, these type of presents uh, overall, um, because it, it, it might become cy cyclical, if you will. I mean, what, think about the next geopolitical crisis or the next COVID variant that will come come around. So if it's not one thing, it'll be the other. But we really have to take in consideration about the truly onshoring and, and, and that made in the USA brand. Good point. If it's one of those cheap dresses, uh, order it now. And if it's one of those uh, maybe real uh, iPhone chargers that, you know, perhaps isn't manufactured over there, you can, you can maybe um, give yourself a few months. Thank you so much for the advice. I can't believe we're even having this conversation. Julia, I, I thought we were in the clear. People can start building again and doing the things that they were hoping to return to. And here we are over two years later. Um, just well, socked with it again. It is mm. a global economy, Ashley, so it's going to take yeah. time, but I think we'll get there. I appreciate it, and I hope you'll come back as a guest. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.